Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofinet the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Fallout 4 The Dundas playthrough with Bayou Bomb in his lovely uh, barbarian outfit. We're back in Sanctuary Hills after we killed Kellogg at Fort Hagen in the previous episode. You know, his brains kind of exploded underneath my baseball bat. But uh, at the end of that episode, the Pridwin arrived and the Brotherhood of Steel came to the Commonwealth in full strength. So, uh, to further that quest time, we need to listen to a certain military frequency. This is Paladin Dance on frequency 9-5. All Brotherhood of Steel units are to return to the Cambridge Police Station immediately for reassignment. So there we go, we need to return to uh, the Cambridge Police Station to Captain, well, Paladin Dance and uh, report back to him so we can head towards the Pridwin. And that's exactly what we're gonna do next. So back at the Cambridge Police Station, as you can see behind me, there's a lot more Brotherhood of Steel uh, personnel right here than there was before. And uh, that means yeah, they, are, they already uh, set up shop here at the Cambridge Police Station as well. So let's head inside and talk to Dance. So back inside the police station, I think, yeah, there's the dance. And it looks like they sent in the big guns. Indeed they did dance. I'm impressed. That ship. I've never seen anything like it. Amazing, isn't it? We call our ship the Pridwin. She's loaded with enough troops and supplies to mount a major offensive. If she's here, Elder Maxon's here. And that means we're going to war. Ooh, a war against who exactly? After rolling that thing in... You've certainly started a war. If history's proven anything, it's that an overwhelming show of force has a chance of halting a conflict before it begins. Besides, why should we hold back when we have something like that at our disposal? He kind of has a said, point. You're about to get to know the Pridwin up close and personal. Ooh. I received orders that were both to report to her immediately. Follow me up to the roof of the police station. We're going for a little ride. Yeah, I kind of like this little scene that we're going to do next. So board the Vertibird. The quest kind of gives it away. But yeah, we're going to board a Vertibird, which is, uh, well, a lot uh, more interesting than trying to fight it without uh, guns. So uh, let's head up the roof. If it looks dead, put one more and uh, let's get into the, the Vertibird. Come on, dance through the door, buddy. Yep, there we go. There's only one problem when boarding a vertebrate as uh, a character like mine uh, and that is, well, there's a big minigun mounted on the side and that's exactly where I'm going to be seating. So uh, let's ride in the vertebrate and then do absolutely nothing for the next five minutes. That minigun in front of you is loaded and ready to fire. I don't know how to Spot use it. hostile during the flight. I suggest you put it to good use. Make sure you properly identify your targets before you start shooting. We don't want to have any mishaps and fire on the locals. Um, well, he says that, but uh, I don't think he actually cares about what we shoot or not. Uh, we can't shoot, of course, because of, uh, well, Bayou Bob can't really use guns. And uh, this is the CIT building, by the way. So, uh, a building that we'll visit soon. But, uh, yeah. Usually, there's not that many enemies down below. I think there's a few Mirelurks in a minute, but that's pretty much it. And we don't really need to fire on them from here anyway. Oh, there we go. There's a, there's a Mirelurk. So yeah, Elder Maxon, the leader of the Brotherhood of Steel for now. Well, at least this, this part of the Brotherhood of Steel. I think there's a few bandits on the roof over there as well. They've been blinded by rumors and misinformation. Every man, woman, and child below is in mortal danger. If we fail, oh, we're it's getting shot at. Time before the enemy overwhelms the population. Cleansing the Commonwealth is our duty, and I will gladly spill my own blood if it ensures our victory. So this is kind of the first hint at the bigger story here. So there's a few factions. A few fact, few factions, yeah, a few factions in the Commonwealth that actually uh, want to cleanse the Commonwealth and get uh, it rid of every abomination on it, but uh, they all have a different kind of rule set about that, and uh, we eventually are going to have to choose between uh, any of those. You can see there's a giant ship on the stranded on, on well in between the city over here, and we might actually pay that a visit as well. You can see a giant sentry bolt on there already. Uh, but that's another very interesting side quest. Uh, 
Especially if you don't know why that ship is over there, because it, al it also explains why that is. And there we have the Pridwin. So we're getting close to the uh, airport terminal where the Pridwin is now docked. Well, not really docked, because, I mean, it's still hanging in the air somehow. But uh, at least we can take a look right now. Look at that thing. And it's massive, and it's a, it's a boardable level, which is really, really cool, I feel like. It's one of the first times in Fallout history that there's something like this in the in a, in a game of them. Because, yeah, this giant airship is uh, the base of operations for the Brotherhood of Steel for the rest of the game. So, uh... Yeah, really, really cool that they just add that on when you uh, get past the first act when you kill Kellogg. I hope you're ready. We are ready, Dance. We are ready. Because uh, there's a particular reason why I wanted to board the Pridwin as fast as possible. Because, uh, yeah, there's a few benefits, uh, well, tied to joining the Brotherhood of Steel proper now. Which is exactly what we're going to do. And, uh, yeah, we'll see about that in a second. Loud noises, so we're getting hooked up to the Pridwin itself and then pulled up. So we don't really... Oh, the, the camera's really shaking a lot, but there we go. So now we're attached to the, uh, the Pridwin. And if I then just... Get out. There we go. We can uh, follow <laughs> dance. And we actually got an idiot savant prompt on discovering the Pridwin. That is nice. So, first character we meet... I'll answer Brent. Captain Kells. Welcome back, Paladin. Allow me to be the first to congratulate you on a successful mission. And is this our new recruit? Yes, sir. I feel promoted him to initiate, and I'd like to sponsor his entry into our rankings personally. Yes, we've read your reports. You'll be pleased to know that Elder Maxon's approved your request and placed the recruit in your charge. Thank you, sir. All now, right. Current orders? You are to remain on the Pridwin and await further instructions. Very good, sir. Ad Victorium, Captain. Ad Victorium, Paladin. I wish I could do that that movement just to approve so, of everything. You're the one Paladin Dance has taken under his wing. <laughs> you don't look much like a soldier to me. Well, actually, I've been to the military, and that's yeah, looks are deceiving. Looks can be deceiving, especially in this case. Why I personally insist on scrutinizing every recruit who boards this vessel. I've read Paladin Dance's reports. He seems to think you'll make a fine addition to the Brotherhood. You might expect an endorsement like that to grant you a great deal of latitude with us. But let me make one thing clear. The Brotherhood of Steel has traveled to the Commonwealth with a specific goal in mind. As the captain of this vessel, I won't allow anyone to jeopardize our mission, no matter how valuable they think they are. Understood? Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Good. That's all for now, soldier. Your orders are to proceed to the command deck for the address. After which, Elder Maxon wishes to have a word with you. Ooh, Elder Maxon wants a word with now. us personally. Otherwise, you're dismissed. Well, I don't think I really need any other questions. But, of course, the reason we're here. Where can I get power armor? Only knights are allowed to wear Brotherhood power armor. And you're no knight. Not yet. Until Elder Maxon grants you that title, you'll have to make do with what you've got. Anything else? Uh, no. I'll talk to Elder Maxon immediately then. I don't have any questions. Then I suggest you head over to the command deck immediately. Dismissed, Initiate. Thank you, uh, Captain Kells. Um, I hope I don't get uh, the job to wipe the floors like that guy. Especially the floors outside, which must be a terrible job in this condition. Since we're, well, we're above the ocean floor and everything, which is really, really bad for the floor, I think. I think, wait. Yeah, we need to go inside, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, here we go. So there we go, inside, and if you just move ahead, there's Elder Maxon right Brothers there. And sisters, the road behind has been long and fraught with difficulty. Each and every one of you has surpassed my expectations by rapidly facilitating our arrival in the Commonwealth. You have accomplished this amazing feat without a hint of purpose or direction. And most impressively, without question. Now that the ship is in position, it is time to reveal our purpose and our myth beneath the Commonwealth. Okay. There is a cancer known as the Institute, a malignant growth that needs to be cut before it infects the surface. They are experimenting with dangerous technologies that could prove to be the world's undoing for the second time in recent history. The Institute scientists have created a weapon 
that transcends the destructive nature of the atom bomb. They call their creation the Synth, a robotic abomination of technology that is free-thinking and masquerades as a human being. This notion that a machine could be granted free will is not only offensive, but horribly dangerous. And like the atom, if it isn't harnessed properly, it has the potential of rendering us extinct as a species. I am not prepared to allow the Institute to continue this line of experimentation. Therefore, the Institute and their synths are considered enemies of the Brotherhood of Steel and should be dealt with swiftly and mercilessly. This campaign will be costly and many lives will be lost. But in the end, we will be saving humankind from its worst enemy, itself. Ad Victorium! Ad Victorium! Ad, ad, ad Victorium! So there we go, Elder Maxon's... The people of the Commonwealth. ...plan. So he wants to rid the, the, the Commonwealth of the Institute and its sins. So he's afraid that the sins would uh, eventually take out humanity in its entirety. And... Uh, I can kind of see that, because usually a lot of people feel like the Brotherhood of Steel are just a bunch of jerks. I can see that. They're playing with fire and we need to save them. Exactly. I just hope we're here in time. I refuse to allow the mistakes of the past to be repeated. Look at this. <laughs> just the, the view of this, uh, this conversation with Bayou Bob in his underwear. Um, it's really, really absurd, but um, what do you want? What do you want from me? I want you to start taking responsibility for this planet. To start making a difference. And from what I've read in Paladin Dance's reports, you've already begun that journey. Seeing as he's one of my most respected field officers, you couldn't get a better recommendation. Good Therefore, to hear. from this moment forward, I'm granting you the rank of knight. Cha-ching! befitting your title, we're granting you a suit of power armor to protect you on the field of battle. Ching-ching-ching! Wear it with pride. All right, not a paladin. Um, I'll do my best. I'll do my best to live up to it. I'm certain that you will. In any event, once you're finished becoming familiar with the Pridwin and my staff, report to the flight deck for your new orders. Welcome aboard the Pridwin, soldier. Make us proud. We will, Elder Maxon, we will. So yeah, the, the Brotherhood of Steel is usually, well, seen as a bit of a, a bunch of jerks because they want to just kill anything that's not human. But, uh... As with most factions in the game, and don't mind if I just take your booze, they just want to, uh, yeah, they have their own motivations of uh, trying to uh, rid the commonwealth of anything they deem to be bad for the people. I'm just gonna grab all, why is there all that booze over here? This is not healthy, boys. Um, thank you. So let's head down first. And uh, we'll have a little chat with everybody here on the Pridwin. So now we're on the main deck of the Pridwin, so the biggest area on the ship. So uh, we're now at night. I'm going to head actually straight to the, uh, the power armory over there in the back and talk to Proctor Ingram, I think her name is, to get our power armor. Where is she? Ah, there she is. Hello. You find me when you're done checking in with Max and Dance. Ah, crap! I need to talk to Dance first. Okay, let's just talk to Dance first then. Hello, Dance. Paladin Dance. There you are. How did it go with Elder Maxon? I'm a knight now. I was very impressed with him. Not to put too fine a point on it, but if you screw up, we go down together. Okay, understood. Now I know you're eager to hop into a suit of power armor and take the fight to the Institute, but first things first. In order to be an effective part of the team, you need to learn your way around this ship and get to know its crew. Since I've been officially assigned to you as your sponsor, I'd recommend taking me along with you. Um, oh, oh, okay, Sounds let's go good. then. Let's go. Outstanding. So, let's have a little chat with everybody here and we'll start, there we go, Shadow of Steel completed, which nets us a bit of experience, just not enough to level up. But, uh, Proctor Ingram. She was over here a minute ago, and now she... Ah, there she is. Hello, Proctor Ingram. So, you're the new recruit I heard about. Ah, uh, not what I was expecting. So, um, I don't know if you noticed this, so she's wearing uh, the rig of a power armor, so nothing uh, armor-wise on there, but she has no legs. Because, uh, yeah, she was uh, 
yeah, horribly crippled in the wars before this, and uh, she lost both of her legs, which is uh, an, an interesting bit of uh, backstory for this hey, character. So uh, we're talking here, right? You sound disappointed. Well, disappointed. I'm not disappointed, just surprised. You don't look like one of the usual wastelanders we pick up. Anyway, since you came down here to meet me, we may as well get it over with. My name's Ingram, and this lovely little grease pit is where you'll usually find me. If your power armor's too tight in the crotch, the Pridwin's about to crash into the ground, or a robot's gone haywire, you come see me. That's a varied, uh, yeah, a varied amount of uh, jobs you have there. Sounds like you have a pretty full plate. Plate? Hell, I have a whole table's worth of duties around here. There isn't a day that goes by on this tub without five or six things breaking down. And since I'm stuck in this rig, I'm not quite as spry as I used to be. The work tends to pile up. Yeah, because it could be a bit annoying to have, uh, well, the lack of fine motor skills when you're in that power armor all the time. I understand. Good. Anyway, I'm sure you're here to get your hands on some power armor. Indeed. There's a pretty decent T-60 suit sitting in Bay 3 that's all yours. The left leg actuator's a bit sticky, but it'll keep the creeps off of you. Oh, and if you need any work done on it, feel free to use the workshops around here. So D60. Excuse me, I need to get back to work. So the first suit we found was T45. Then we found one bit of T, uh, three bits of T51 armor, and but now when uh, joining the Brotherhood of Steel, we get a full T60 suit of power armor. I think it's supposed to be this one. Yeah. So let's enter in the power armor. And then we can check out what the um, the specs are on this thing. So just a quick note about power armor. Every time you enter power armor, you uh, you lose the benefits of all your armor pieces. So every perk I had on the armor is now gone, including any uh, any sort of uh, upgrades to my stats, which is kind of a bummer. But at least we get a lot of it back in return for uh, a lot of armor. So then I'm just gonna head out really quickly. And then uh, go into the power armor station to check out the stats. Craft. So it's already B model as well, so not the standard A model, which gives us 200 physical defense, 140 energy resistance, and 150 radiation protection, and 125. And that's per per stuff, so it goes uh, up and down depending on what uh, item you're looking at. So the, the torso is always the biggest one with a lot of stuff attached to it. I would want to go into some uh, of the perks later on, but I'm probably going to be pretty limited right now. I think the Brotherhood of Steel, yeah, paint job that's on here already increases strength with all pieces painted, which is uh, good to offset the fact that we lose the bonuses from uh, the Grognak costume, etc. Uh, otherwise, I don't think I'll have much many options because I don't have the armor perks just yet. Which is something we'll have to uh, look after in uh, the next few levels. But let's get in and let's walk around a bit. Because we have plenty of fusion cores from uh, our adventures before this. So we can walk around with this pretty much indefinitely for now. Uh, so yeah, we have 25 cores which is uh, plenty. So as long as you're just walking the core just depletes really really slowly. Once you start running and using uh, action points that changes a bit. But yeah, for now we don't need to worry about energy consumption. So, let's have a little chat with the other two people that were on our list, starting with... Where is he? There he is. Oh, Proctor Quinlan. Here. Just set the books down anywhere. I'll get to them as soon as I can. So there's a bit of a confusion here, but... Uh, there I we go. think you're confusing me with someone else. Hmm. Perhaps I need to rummage through the supply bins for a new pair of glasses. Yes, Since indeed. Since it's obvious that you aren't who I was expecting, would you mind telling me why you're here? Well, uh, I'm, I'm meeting the crew. Maxon wanted me to meet the crew, so you were next on my list. Ah, yes. You must be the new recruit described in Paladin Dance's report. Under normal circumstances, I'd provide you with a proper orientation of my department. However, I'm woefully behind setting up research patrols and getting bombarded with requests for technical documentation. Unfortunately, I'm lacking the personnel needed to get the job done. Hmm, maybe we could help. Maybe I can lend you a hand. That would be splendid. As you patrol the Commonwealth, keep your eyes open for blueprints, memos, manuals, books, charts. 
anything containing useful technical data. I'm authorized to pay you for each bundle of documents that you recover. And if you wish to be assigned to a research patrol, I have plenty of them waiting to be filled. In any event, it was a pleasure to meet you, Knight. The pleasure was all mine, Proctor Quinlan. So he also is the quest giver for a Radiant Quest type, uh, similar to clearing out, cleansing the Commonwealth from uh, Reese. Uh, it's just to go on a research patrol, which is not that interesting to do. Definitely not in this playthrough. But the other thing is just gathering technical documents. Uh, every time we find one of those, we can bring that back and uh, we get a, a paid for each bundle we found. I think. Glad you finally stopped there by, soldier. Are you ready for your medical exam? Uh, yes. Sure. Go right ahead. All right. I'm going to ask you a series of medical-related questions, and I'd like you to answer me to the best of your ability. First question. As a child, were you ever exposed to radiation for an extended period of time? Um, no. Because, yeah, um, sarcastic option is really tempting here. My father said I used to sit way too close to the television. The television? Wait a second. Let me check my notes here. You were a vault dweller? You're probably healthier than anyone else aboard. Indeed. Anyway, sorry I missed that in your records. Just going down the list of questions. I'm sure you understand. Okay, second question. Have you ever had or come in contact with a person confirmed to be carrying a communicable disease? Um, and the, I, the, no. Never been seriously sick in my life. Good, good. Third question. And please, answer honestly. Have you ever had sexual relations with any species considered non-human? Uh, n no. Uh, no. Never have. Very well. No. Last question. Would you have any problems pulling the trigger on an enemy of the Brotherhood, whether they're human, formerly human, or machine? Is that a medical question? Uh, wait, what? That's more of a morals question, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I feel that the mental state of the crew is just as important in the way as the physical. Anyone that hesitates firing in combat due to misguided moral standards certainly isn't Brotherhood material. So what about you? Would you have a problem with it? Well, um, no problem whatsoever, because we're going to lie about this, because there's going to be times that we're going to have to react a bit differently, but... Nope, no problem whatsoever. Excellent. You'll fit in quite well around here. Excellent. I think I've got all the information I need. I see no reason to prevent you from beginning your duties immediately. So now that I think Whoever about it, we lied sense. completely, because he was talking about pulling the trigger, and we can't pull the trigger! Cade, we can't do that at all. What the hell is that? Hmm. Knight Captain Cade's report. Medical report. Knight Captain Cade reporting. I've been working closely with Scribe Naraya, examining some of the synth bodies that our recon teams have recovered. If you keep boarding, Even though we have yet to recover down. the synths that appear completely human, Good to see these you lesser again, models Knight. are still Anything I can do to help. advanced. What's becoming apparent is that the Institute is the most technologically gifted enemy we've ever encountered, and therefore exceedingly dangerous. I've turned over all of my data to Lancer Captain Kells, along with my recommendations for developing effective countermeasures for these synths. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how much it will help given the fact that the real enemy are the synths that could be hiding among us. Indeed, to see you again, the real enemy might be uh, right among us, which is a, an interesting statement. So he's just talking about the possibility that they are already since hiding in the Brotherhood of Steel. Can't I take the, the microscope? Oh no, it's actually bolted down. Uh, but I'm just raiding this place for every bit of uh, medical supplies I can get. Because uh, it's just really, really, really nice loot over here. There we go. So there's also a report from uh, Quinlan. Damn it, scribe. I told you I didn't want the corners bent. The issues were to be in mint condition. I'm sorry, Please, Proctor, but this is the only limited always. edition annual we've recovered. I do hope you'll Even before the bombs fell, this was the rarest issue. The one where Grognak dies and comes back to life? Yes, scribe. I've read the 2076 underlaying price guide from cover to cover, so I'm well aware of its past value. The fault for this travesty rests squarely on your shoulders because you chose to ignore the important lesson I taught you. 
Which is? Always bag and board. I'm sorry, sir. You're absolutely right. And I promise it will never... Um, sir? What's that red blinking light on your terminal? What? Oh, damn it all. I left it in record mode. Just let me... Yeah, so Quinlan is a very big Grognak the Barbarian fan, apparently, which is uh, funny, because he, he must have seen me pass without my uh, power armor on a second ago, so that's that's really funny. So we need to talk to Proctor Teagan last now, and he's the guy that is running the uh, armory here, which is really, really interesting. But this place is filled with booze. This is Bio Bob's heaven. Ooh, a plasma mine and a duffel bag that probably belongs to... Uh, Dr. Ingram over there, um, but yeah, let's go. Oh, that was the terminal. Yeah, let's just talk to Deegan over here, who runs the armory. Step forward, Knight. Even though they've locked me in this blasted cage, I promise that I won't bite. So, reason there's a big item behind him that I really, really want, and it's that helmet over there. It's the uh, one of the first pieces of X01 power armor that you can get. It's uh, the best power armor in the game, and it's uh, just sitting there on the desk behind him, and you can't even buy it from him, but uh, looks I uncomfortable. Really it looks uncomfortable in there. It's not that bad. Now, this is the stowage depot, and I, as you probably already guessed, am the ship's quartermaster, Proctor Teagan. The powers that be have me locked in here, so I can keep an eye on the Brotherhood's valuables. If you need to stock up on supplies before you head out on a mission, this is the place to buy them. So the X01 armor was the armor of the uh, the Enclave, sort of uh, evil government military organization. But uh, good to know. That's good to know. I'm glad you're the agreeable type. When I tell most of the new recruits that they have to buy their own equipment, they give me the stink eye. The good news is by having a constant flow of caps, I'm able to buy whatever you bring me. Yeah, I'm mostly interested in weapons, but I'll take anything useful. Of course, if you're just looking to make a few caps on the side, I might have some extra work for you to do. Which is another uh, bit of uh, raiding quest. I might actually I pick one up. Caps. You need them, and I want you to spend them here. It's a match made in heaven. It just involves a little bit of heavy lifting and interacting with the local farms. And since I'm stuck up here manning this one-man zoo, I need someone to do the legwork for me. After you're done with the meet and greet, we can discuss the details. In the meantime, if you ever need anything else, a gun, a mod, even ammo, you just let me know. <laughs> and there we go, quest completed. Does that mean I got the, an idiot savant prompt on the quest completing? I think I might have. Tour of duty, there we go, that must have been. So that's times three again. Pick a fight. Which is gonna boost us up quite a bit. There we go, look at that. It's going again. That was almost a complete level in one. Uh, I'm actually gonna barter with him for a second, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't sell the helmet over there. Looking for some firepower. But that can give him uh, a lot of ammo, so I'm just gonna browse his, uh, his inventory a bit. He does sell three plasma grenades. I think I'm gonna buy those. And this is where uh, hoarding those uh, Institute rifles really comes into play because I get uh, a lot of fusion cells uh, from that. And I can sell all of those for one cap a pop. So that's really, really nice. Um, another thing we can do later on is when we deplete a fusion core, we can actually sell them to uh, everybody here as well. So that's, uh, that's, that's very nice. So there we go. We can't buy the Exo one helmet, sadly, and I don't think I'm actually able to... Yeah, it's master locked. So I could technically get um, one of the companions here that can open up master locks, open the lock and try to get to the helmet with a stealth boy. But uh, for now, that's not really an option. And I think there's, there's easier ways of getting the, uh, the Exo one armor than doing that. So, we've met with everybody, now that means we need to talk to Elder Maxon for our next assignment. So, I just left Paladin Dance behind as well, because I don't want to be traveling with a companion, especially not now. But, uh, we'll be heading to Elder Maxon right now. So, I was kind of hoping that uh, Proctor Teagan would allow us to uh, buy a power sledge, but a super sledge, but uh, sadly not. Um... Do I need to head in here already? We can actually just 
bypass all of this, which is really, really cool. Because in power armor, you don't take fall damage. So if we go around here, should be able to just drop down. Although I should probably talk to Alden Maxon, who's still on board the, the Pridwin for now. Now that you've familiarized yourself with the Pridwin's crew, are you ready for your next assignment, brother? Uh, yes we are. Yes, Elder. Good. Let's get right to it, then. Shall we? Take a look over there. That's Fort Strong. And it's infested with super mutants. Having those aberrations of nature close enough to smell is making me sick to my stomach. To make matters worse, they're sitting on top of a massive stockpile of fat man shells we could use in our campaign. I want you to head over there, wipe out everything that moves, and secure that stockpile. Understood? That's really interesting, because a, a few minutes before this, he was talking about since being as dangerous as uh, nuclear bombs, and now he's just looking to acquire some, which is, um, well, interesting. But uh, consider it done. Consider it done. Look, I realize you're eager to take the fight to the Institute, but it'll have to wait. The Brotherhood cannot allow those abominations to have a nuclear arsenal at their fingertips. Now, we have a vertebrate on standby, fully armed and ready to depart. Use it to carry our message to Fort Strong and wipe those dirty mutants from the face of the earth. Oh, this language, place. language. Yeah, goodbye, Alder Maxon. So, yeah, Fort Strong over there. This is the mission I've been dreading um, because we need to go into the vertebrate to start this and we can't get out until we're landed smack dam in the middle of that place over there. And there's a lot of things over there that are going to be firing at us. And I can't do anything back because I'm stuck behind the minigun. Which is, yeah, this is this is going to hurt. Um, I'm actually hesitating to even do this right now. Maybe you want to do something else first. You know what? We're going to do something else first. We're going to meet one of the other factions because that's actually something we can do. Before we do that, let's jump off the Bridwin. Oh, okay. No. There we go. Boom. So that's exactly what you can do when you're in power armor. Don't forget that you're out of power armor when you do that. Because, um, yeah, you're going to kill yourself if you do that. Uh, there's a few quests around here as well, but we're going to do these later on. So uh, first off, we'll start the mission that we want to do. So we've heard talk about the Freedom Trail, which is uh, something something very... It's kind of a scavenger hunt in the, in the central Boston area, which we're going to start right now. So, back at Swan's Pond, this is exactly where the Freedom Trail starts, which is, yeah, I'm actually wondering, should I try, no, 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 I'm still, I'm still way too underpowered to uh, take out Swan, and the Tour Bolt is actually really strong as well, but this is where the Freedom Trail starts, so. Seven, and A, some sort of code? Indeed it is, because this is the start of a sort of scavenger hunt, as I said before. So Boston, the Freedom Trail. So we can follow this red line along the city and we'll see where we'll end up and what we'll come across in the meantime. Ooh, that's a nuka cola and a cherry. Thank you. So there's a lot of gunfire in the background. Don't need to worry about that just yet. And I think we cleared out most of the enemies along the trail. So it's going... Yeah, okay, so somebody drew red paint to uh, yeah. continue... Okay, the Massachusetts State House. We got an idiot's font prompt. And we got our next letter for L. For... Mm -hmm. L. That's definitely a code. Indeed, Bayou Bob, you're onto something there. Next one. Two and A. So the Freedom Trail is also very interesting to activate a few uh, markers that we're going to visit later on. So right here we have, if I just raid the settler, we have Good Neighbor, which is another little settlement in, um, yeah, in, in, in the Commonwealth. So I'm actually going to just enter and just see what we can do with the first thing in there before, and then we'll continue the Freedom Trail. So, Good Neighbor, which is uh, a lovely little settlement filled with mostly evil people. But uh, let's have a little chat with the first right, guy who talks to us. There. First time in Good Neighbor? You can't go walking around without insurance. So, poor Finn. I'm going to tell him to back off, but if that doesn't work, there's something very atypical for this game it wants you to do. You better back off, or you're the one who's going to need insurance. 
What was that? I, I couldn't hear over the sound of all that pathetic. You hand over everything you got in their pockets, or accidents start happening to you. Big, bloody accidents. Whoa, 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 time out. Someone steps through the gate the first time, they're a guest. You lay off that extortion crap. What do you care? He ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn. I said let him go. You soft, Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new mayor. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. And stab! Yo! Yeah. Why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. So, yeah, welcome right, to Good brother. Neighbor. Y yes. I'm fine. Thanks for taking care of him. Good. Now, don't let this incident taint your view of our little community. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. I love Hancock. I love his design. I love the idea about the character. This is, this is great. Yeah, I feel you. Good. You stay cool, and you'll be part of the neighborhood. So long as you remember who's in charge. Yes, you are, definitely. I don't want to get stabbed in the tummy. So, uh, yeah, poor Finn. He always dies. So either you kill him or Hancock kills him. Yeah, Finn, Finn always dies. It's kind of fitting, because over there, kill or be killed. Um, it's kind of the, the mantra of good neighbor. Um, just wanted to pop in here because I wanted to check out a few of the shops here. Maybe they have some cool m melee weapons. So, first off, Cleo. Everything here is guaranteed to injure, maim, or kill at your discretion. That's cool. Except me. I only kill when I want to. I love Cleo. So, uh, yeah, an Assaultron who has uh, turned around into uh, yeah, a shop owner. Let's barter. I'll take a look, sure. Oh, yes. Cleo sells a Super Sledge. I'm buying that immediately. There we go, Super Sledge. Uh, and I think, yeah, she also sells um, a, a particular variant of the rocket launcher called the Party Starter. It does 50% more damage against humans. So yeah, it's kind of a fitting name. You can definitely use that to start a fight. Uh, do I want to buy the plasma grenades as well? Ah, might as well. And that still doesn't uh, lose us all our fusion cells. So there we go, Super Sledge, which is really, really cool. So this is also interesting, the Drifter over here. It's a... Uh, Let's say he's a character we're going to be seeing uh, a lot more of. Because this is... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to spoil that just yet. If you don't know who he is, um, we'll talk about that later. There's another shop over here. Let's see if she sells anything interesting. So sadly, I've yet to find uh, a shipment of fertilizer. But two bags of fertilizer again. Doesn't doesn't really feel that bad. And there, there's the drifter again. So he's just uh, chopping meat. What's up, he says. But let's continue on the Freedom Trail. We might pick up a descent back outside. So next Freedom Trail uh, marker is over here. Now a six and an O. And then over here the next marker. Three I. Just realized we have a level up waiting for us as well. Um, I think I'm just going to go for another point into intelligence. We're almost at science, which is where we want to be. Um, but might be that at level 20 we just take armorer next, so, uh, but now, intelligence. The next one is right in between some super mutants, so I'm just gonna have to, uh, take this guy out. Cause I think there's a- oh god. No, 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 I hear a suicider. And that was a rocket launcher, okay, this is great. There we go. Oh shit. Come on, come on. Oh god. Oh god, I'm gonna die. Okay. That was... Yeah, I wasted about five grenades there, but... Ooh, mini nuke. Definitely worth it. Okay, and I think I, I, I aggroed a few uh, bandits like this as well. I hear people screaming, but the armor actually withstood a lot of uh, explosions, because I got almost directly hit by a missile launcher. And uh, yeah, that's really the benefit of power armor. So I did run a long way from those... Uh, 
that rocket launcher guy and the suicide. But uh, let's head back. So the next one is over here. 5R. Where we found the super mutants. So next one. 8D next. And if we follow the trail until its very end, we end up at this little church, the Old North Church. And we have our last letter. 1R. Hmm. The trail ends right at the church. There we go. Let's take a look inside. So, inside the Old North Church, this is, um, it seems like a little area at first, but there's uh, quite a few things hiding around here. So let's head inside, and there's, suppose, uh, yeah, I think it's mostly ghouls, just a lot of them. What the? Just gonna try and do it like this, cause uh, I do take more damage, but I use less of my fusion core this way. Don't really see another one right now, so I think that's pretty much it for now. The church itself is not important though, cause there's a symbol over there on the, the drop down, well, balcony. Which means we need to head down here towards the green light. Just gonna grab everything here. Withered feral ghouls, so they are quite high level ghouls in here. But uh, for now they all seem to be dead. And the deeper we go, the darker it kind of gets. But uh, yeah, then we suddenly end up in a sort of uh, tunnel system, like the catacombs. And uh, is there something we can read around here? I don't think so. We just need to keep following those uh, lantern signs. So you can't really sneak effectively in power armor, although that was a sneak attack, which is really, really cool. So uh, just keep following the tunnels until we eventually end up at this contraption. So there's a, a wheel over here um, where we need to enter the code we just gathered along the Freedom Trail. And the code is actually Railroad. Hmm, it spins. Indeed, Bob, it spins. And when you enter Railroad completely, the door opens. There we go. I mean, I mean it's a really cool way to introduce one of the uh, one of the, the factions over here. I'm just gonna quick save really quickly. As well, I'm in Brotherhood Steel Power Armor, so that might be rubbing them the wrong way. Let's just head inside. Stop right there. You went through a lot of effort to arrange this meeting. But before we go any further, answer my questions. Who the hell are you? Um... Should I try the charisma option? I'm not gonna try that even. I followed the freedom trail looking for the railroad. I'm not your enemy. If that's true, you have nothing to fear. Who told you how to contact us? Uh, a random guy in Diamond City. I just heard a rumor about you guys in Diamond City. I see. I'm Desdemona, and I'm the leader of the railroad. And you are? Deacon, where have you been? You're having a party. What gives with my invitation? I need intel. Who is this? Wow. Newsflash, boss. This guy is kind of a big deal out there. Um, so yeah. You might remember the voice and kind of the looks. He has a new haircut now because he was bald a few minutes ago. But we saw Deacon in uh, Good Neighbor a few minutes ago. So uh, I'm flattered. Glad someone noticed. You know, you're practically famous. You're the one rebuilding the Minutemen out of Sanctuary, right? And as if that wasn't enough, the railroad owes you a crate, hell, a truckload of Nuka Cola for what you did to Kellogg. He was our public enemy number one. So you're vouching for him? Yes, trust me. He's someone we want on our side. That changes things. So, stranger, why did you want to meet with us anyway? Well, I just wanted to show the audience that there's another faction looking, uh, lurking around the Commonwealth, but uh, yes, I want to fight the Institute. The only ones fighting the Institute. And I wanna take them Which is not true, because like we just came from the Brotherhood of Steel who wants to fight the Institute. Out for revenge. That everyone's here to help their fellow man. That would be a lie, though. Indeed, but um, yeah, I kind of want to avenge my family. The Institute's going to pay for what they've done to my family. You have a lot in common with too many of us, I'm afraid. 
If we're going to be dealing with you, I need to make sure we're on the same page. You know what a synth is, right? Indeed, we've, uh, we've kind of fought a few of them as well. Yeah, I know all about them. Good. The Institute treats synths as property, as tools. Um, synths are kind of machines, but go on. Go on. So we seek to free the synths from their bondage. Give them a chance at a real life. I have a question. The only question that matters. Would you risk your life for your fellow man? Even if that man is a synth? Um, so again, not that black and white, but um, I'd risk my life. Once, I pledged my life to protect my countrymen. I don't see this as any different. Well said. You were right about us. We're the only ones in the Commonwealth brave enough or stupid enough to fight the Institute. And we could use more brothers in arms. But right now, we don't have the time to train up a new agent. There are, however, other valuable ways you can contribute. And in turn, we can help you. See Deacon for details. You're free to go. So I kind of feel like synths and humans are almost equal, especially once we start seeing the more human synths. Um, but there's a difference in just going one way or the other, so we leveled up again. So uh, the railroad is all about synths and keeping them alive just as you would humans and the brother to steal just about killing all the sins. Um, I feel like I'm somewhere in between. It depends on what the human or the synth has done uh, before deciding what to go what to go with, if you want to kill them or not. It just not depends on what they are for me. But let's have a little chat with Deacon. When you tango with the Institute, you got to be careful when someone new gets on the dance floor. Indeed, you uh, are immediately forgiven. Your leader was just being cautious. Exactly. Kind of killed our chance at a friendly first impression, though. But it's all good now. I vouched for you. Nobody got shot. Still, I would consider it a close personal favor if you didn't sell us out to the Institute. Thanks. We will probably not do that. Don't worry. I'll keep your secret. That's what I want to hear. So Des wants me to make you a tourist. That's what we call someone who helps out with the odd job here and there. What a waste. I'm just going to come out and say this. The railroad needs you. So Deacon is an interesting character. So you can spot him all across the Commonwealth. So not just in Good Neighbor, that he keeps an eye on you. So the fact that he tells you at the beginning of this quest that he knows what you're about is actually fitting because he actually follows you around most of the time. So uh, yes, I'm interested. You got my attention. I got a job. Too big for me, just perfect for the two of us. You help me out, we turn a few heads, and then Dez invites you into the fold. Then, if you get into a bind and need some help, your buddies in the railroad got your back. It's a really cool quest, this one, and I'm gonna take it, obviously, because it's gonna get us going in the railroad. And there's a few things I want to get from the railroad before we continue on the Brotherhood of Steel route uh, much further. We can do a few more quests, but uh, yeah, we're gonna take the job. Sign me up, then. Perfecto. Let's meet up at the old freeway outside of Lexington. I'll fill you in once you get there. So we've been to Lexington before and we'll uh, do that later on. But I think we kind of have an episode here. We uh, met with the Brotherhood of Steel proper at the Bridwin. We geared up and then we uh, followed the Freedom Trail all the way to the Railroad, our second okay. faction. Well, the third faction is, of course, the Institute, but we haven't really properly met the Institute yet. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, and if you did, don't forget to like right here on YouTube. And uh, I'd like to thank you all enormously for watching and hope to see you guys next time on Fallout 4 The Gunless Playthrough with Bio Bob right now in Power Armor. Thanks enormously and goodbye.